Tabuli time. Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen is made possible by. Do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. Tasty. It's none other than my namesake signature salad, Taste Bud Tantalizing Tabbouli. This fresh and finely chopped signature, significant, and special salad consists of fresh parsley, spearmint, scallions, vine ripe ruby red tomatoes, and fine bulgur wheat, which combine together in a tidal wave of fresh lemon juice and extra virgin olive oil sprinkled with sea salt, making for a luscious and light Lebanese salad that is incredibly refreshing. Originating in the mountains of Mount Lebanon, it is known as the Queen Salata throughout the land. This special salad typically accompanies most Lebanese dishes and is served as part of the maza or alongside an array of main courses, making for mouth-watering and memorable Middle Eastern meals. It's tart, it's tangy, it's tasty. It's tabbouleh. It's tabbouli time. It's a salad, a nickname, and a stage name slash brand name by yours truly, Julie Tabbouli. And today is all about tabbouli and traditions as well. And tabbouli is basically known as the queen salata or salad throughout the land of Lebanon and the Middle East. It's this overly refreshing, fresh herb, vine ripe, ruby red tomatoes or garden tomatoes with sprinkles of bulgur wheat, in Arabic we say burga, and it's tossed in a fresh lemon juice, olive oil, and sea salt dressing. And it's absolutely one of the most tastiest salads that you'll come across in your life. And with a name like Julie Tabuli, you better believe that mine is one of the best that you'll come about as well. So the first thing that I did for our tabbouleh is that I have these beautiful bunches of flat leaf parsley. I have about three bunches for this recipe. And then I also have about six scallions, also known as green onions. And I have some spearmint, which we call nana. They're washed, they're rinsed, and they're partially dried. And we're first gonna get started on our bulgur wheat. And because we're using the fine cut, there's no need to actually boil the bulgur wheat. We're just gonna simply put it in some nice, Water, just tap water is fine. And that's it. Um, also, if you are celiac or gluten sensitive or just sort of trying to live a gluten-free life lately, then you can certainly substitute quinoa, which is a gluten-free grain for the uh, bulgur wheat. So we're gonna start off with some beautiful vine ripe ruby red tomatoes on the vine, which are my tomatoes of choice, as you can see these beauties right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna sort of cut out the little core of the tomatoes on each one of these. And the cut is very key in making tabbouleh because as I mentioned, it's a finely chopped salad. So we kind of want all these little bite-sized pieces going through. And it makes all the difference when you toss it into the tabbouleh bowl with all of the other ingredients. All right, so I'm gonna scoop up as much of these juices as I can because the juices actually make all the difference because they blend really beautifully with the fresh lemon juice and the olive oil and the sea salt to create that tasty tabbouleh dressing. All right, so now we cleaned our board. We're gonna start with our scallions first, and these are just beautiful. So we're just gonna simply trim the ends, stems, just like so. And then we're just gonna run our sharp paring knife right through. By bunching them together really makes all the difference, by the way, in the cuts as well being uniform. 
Look at that. See how beautiful that is? And now we're going to go for our flat leaf parsley. As I mentioned, I'm using about three bunches, and they're pretty good size. They're not too small, and they're not too big. So I'm just going to slice those off, just like so. Try to keep it nicely, tightly bunched with the one hand. And we're going to start at the ends, at those tender, thin stems, and work our way through the leaves. See how finely that I'm sort of running my knife through? And I'm with my other hand, I'm holding all of the parsley together. So there's no need actually to keep on like running your knife through and chopping and chopping and chopping because you don't want to bruise the parsley leaves either, which you could definitely do if you over chop. Who needs a food processor for this? Look how beautiful it is. Right? And because we, you know, we pre-washed it, we let it dry a little bit so the leaves aren't wet, it's not soaked and soggy and things like that, okay? And I also wanted to mention that the reason why I sort of layer it with the tomatoes on the bottom and then the scallions is that you can definitely make this ahead of time doing it this way. If you were to reverse it, then the tomatoes would make the um, herbs really soggy. Okay, so our last sort of fresh herb and key herb in tabbouleh is our fresh spearmint, and it is spearmint. It's not peppermint or any other type of mint. In Arabic, we call it nana. I'm just gonna take them off their small stems like I'm doing right now, and I'm gonna just set them on top of the tabbouleh bowl. We're basically going to be tossing the tabbouleh uh, right before we enjoy it with my Uncle Dominic today. And before we get to making our laha nishvi, our luscious lamb kebabs, and our Lebanese-style french fries and tomb sauce, we're going to take a little look at the tomatoes with Mama in the garden. Although all of our fresh herbs and vegetables make up the majority of the tabbouleh, for me, making the tastiest tabbouleh is all about the tomato. Right, Mama? Right. So here we have so many different types of tomatoes that are right from your garden. So right. tell everybody about what you planted this year. Well, we of course we plant the cherry tomatoes, always uh, good. Yeah. The same Marzano tomatoes. Yes. We have the brandy wine, regular uh, like beefsteak tomatoes. Tomatoes on and, the vine, which right. are my favorite. And they all taste good, as long as they're fresh from the garden. Yeah. So my pick for tabbouleh, which I always like to go for, is a nice fresh vine ripe, ruby red tomato on the vine. But um, as Mama was saying, really any... Lawns, it's fresh out of the garden, it tastes delicious in the tabbouleh. So if they're in season and they're in the garden, um, any really tomato that you like can go in the tabbouleh dish. And yeah. why I think the tomatoes make all the difference, and you tell me, Mama, as well, but the tomato juices and the tomatoes themselves are really what give the tabbouleh, you know, all of that flavor, the juices. The juice that mix with the lemon and the olive oil that yeah. makes it taste so good. Yeah, I agree. For me and my tabbouleh and for mama's tabbouleh and for your tabbouleh, go for the tastiest tomato that you can find. <laughs> right, correct. <laughs> I love that I was able to share all of the reasons why the tomatoes are so key in making the tastiest tabbouleh and of course with mama in her garden. So while we were learning about tomatoes, I actually started to get a head start on our luscious laham mishwi, our lamb kebabs. And the word laham literally translates to lamb and mishwi is grilled. Um, now, I'm obviously using the traditional meat of choice in Lebanon and the Middle East, which is lamb, but you can certainly use uh, beef if you like, like sirloin would be really nice for these kebabs as well. As you can see, I have them in these beautiful sort of two inch uh, to three inch size cubes of meat and you can do them yourself at home if you have really good uh, butcher and knife skills or you can have your butcher do them for you. And I have them marinated basically in some olive oil, sea salt and pepper and that's it, really simple. And for the onions, I basically wedged up some beautiful Spanish onions, some uh, or yellow onions. I used uh, Vidalia onions, which have a little bit more sweetness to them, you know, they're really nice. And also some red onions. And with the peppers, I have yellow, orange, and red bell peppers. So it's really colorful too. I mean, traditionally growing up, 
uh, you know, I always just remember the lamb with the onions. That was how my family always made it, and that's how I always saw it at our Lebanese table. Um, but I decided to kind of color it up a little bit and give a little bit more flavor with the um, peppers. So now I'm just oiling up our grilled pan that we have nice and hot over our open flames on our cooktop here. I'm just brushing them with a little bit of olive oil to ensure that our lamb kebabs do not stick to the grill. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to get these on. Look how beautiful they came out, right? Mmm. Don't you just love the sound of sizzle? <laughs> I think we can get about six of these on at once, just like so. Just want to make sure that they're, you know, have enough space between each one of them and they're sort of nestled right on the grill itself. And then we're just going to let these grill for about 10 to 12 minutes and we're going to turn them halfway through and you can kind of simply just rotate them with your fingers, the end of the wooden skewers that we have so that they're evenly cooking on all sides of the lamb. And because it's lamb, it's definitely a lean meat, so we definitely don't want to just put these down and walk away and sort of like forget about them. We want to make sure that we're sort of manning the grill when it comes to lamb meat. So our second batch of our Laha Mishmi, our luscious lamb kebabs, look absolutely succulent and they are grilled to perfection as you guys can see. And I just love the aroma, it smells absolutely sensational in this kitchen right now. It's making me crazy actually how good it smells. And I love that we layered the uh, lamb with the red onions and the Vidalia onions and the yellow Spanish onions as well as the um, bell peppers the red and the orange and the yellow bell peppers, which gives the lamb lots of flavor. So now we're just going to get some more of our chebes, our Lebanese pocket bread, right on top of those lamb kebabs to stay nice and warm. We're just gonna get these in the oven. I have the oven preheated at about 200 degrees, and they're gonna stay nice and warm and super succulent while we work on our other traditional Lebanese dishes. with my uncle Dominic. He's my very special uncle and he's so special for so many reasons, but there's one in particular that comes up in my life every single day. <laughs> so when I'm meeting and greeting all of you, before you guys ask me about my recipes or about mama or her garden, there is one question that you always ask me first. What do you think that question is? Your, where did you get your name? Exactly. <laughs> so, where did I get my name, Julie Tavuli? <laughs> well, it started when you were about five years old. Uh, you, we, we'll be uh, hanging out in the backyard, uh, having a few drinks and some maza. Yes. And you'll be running around the yard uh, <laughs> uh, throughout the whole time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, constantly call you Julie Tavuli. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that name, I think, stuck. Right. For a long time. Yes. I don't remember being called anything else, actually, from an early age than Julie Tabuli. <laughs> Correct. The dish Tabuli is is really special uh, yes. to a lot of Middle Eastern uh, people. And yes. that's one of my favorites. Yeah, and one of my favorites, of course. And then now you call me Miss Tabuli. Right. I've, I've graduated. <laughs> yes, you graduated. <laughs> Who would have thought? Would you have thought that? Never in a million years. I never thought I'd be sitting over here doing an interview with you, and that name stuck all those years. Uh, I'm so happy you gave me the nickname, and I'm so happy that um, just so serendipitously I'm able to be now Julie Tabuli to all of you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm proud of you. Aww. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> So now we're starting on another traditional dish that is seen all throughout Lebanon and for sure in my family, which is our batata mitli, which is our Lebanese style, fresh, hand-cut French fries. 
And I'm using the Yukon Gold potatoes for this, which you can see right here how beautiful these are. And then I peeled all of the skin off and it has this beautiful golden color. And I really like using them for these french fries because they have a really nice, rich, sort of creamy texture and flavor. And this dish especially makes me think of my sit though. <laughs> she just loves potatoes. And I remember when she came to visit us, I was in, I think I was in middle school actually at the time. And I swear every dish that she made for my uh, sister and my brothers and I had some sort of potato <laughs> in the meal. <laughs> and she'd always come to the table and say, skibu, skibu, eat, eat. Okay, so that looks amazing. They're these beautiful sort of long cut strips that we have here. Do you see that? They're about maybe like a quarter inch or so thick. They're not too thin and they're not too thick, okay? And in the meantime, we have our oil that is nice and hot. I'm using vegetable oil today, but you can use canola oil or any sort of oil that you would like, just kind of staying away from the olive oil, of course. And by now, it should be nice and hot. Okay, so we're just gonna simply grab a handful of our fresh cut hand cut Yukon Gold, golden, delicious potatoes. We're gonna just lower them into the oil, just like so. We want them a nice golden, light golden color, and we want them nice and crispy and crunchy on the outside, and just still really nice and luscious on the inside. I feel like the french fries for sure make this a traditional Lebanese meal because they're always at the table both here and in Lebanon. I remember French fries, our Lebanese style French fries, always being served. And for sure, with our dishes that we're making today, they go so perfectly. Our tabbouleh, our lahem mishwi, our lamb kebabs, our tomb sauce, really makes a complete traditional Lebanese meal, I feel. And I think my Uncle Dominic's just gonna love it. Especially once we finish these fries with our tomb sauce and with our fresh herbs and sea salt, they're gonna be so scrumptious. So while I'm frying up the rest of our Lebanese-style French fries that we call batata mitli, I want you guys to check out my very own herb garden that Mama planted for me this year. So you all know Mama's glorious garden, but this year she helped me plant my very own herb garden right here. I call it my binti, my baby herb garden. So Mama, tell everybody how you helped me plant my herb garden this year. Well, I focused on uh, herbs that you enjoy cooking with, which is especially tabbouleh. Yes. <laughs> and that's parsley, scallion, and mint. Right. And then we, we planted other herbs that you use in a lot of your cooking and your stuffing. So Mama, the number one question that I always get asked is why I like using flat leaf parsley versus the curly parsley. Well, you're able to cut it really fine, which is, that's what you have to do when you make tabbouleh. The finer the parsley, the better the tabbouleh, I think, comes out. Yeah. And I think it's got a better taste to it. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's easier for me to grow, and you do cut it a few times mm -hmm. a year mm -hmm. and use it over and over again. The next ingredient in the tabbouleh, because it's our fresh herb salad, our onion of choice for our tabbouleh, right. which is our scallions. Our scallion and these are my walking onions. And yeah, they're constantly, like <laughs> they're constantly producing uh, yeah. a scallion all through the summer. Yeah. And I and I do leave them in, mm. some of them for to overwinter and they come back again mm. in the spring. And that's why I like them so much. And then of course, tabbouleh cannot be complete without our spearmint. We call it nana, by the way, in, uh, in Lebanese, right? It just gives the tabbouleh fresh taste. Yeah. It, it's delicious, you know, it's there. You can't, you don't have to put that much to know it's there because you don't want to put a whole bunch of it mm -hmm. because it, it'll become bitter. So a yeah. uh, little bit goes a long way. Yeah. There you have it. You have your three main ingredients here next to our tomatoes. We have our parsley, which is our, in Lebanese, badunis. badunis. We have our scallion. Basal and we have our mm -hmm. nana. nana. <laughs> Thanks, Mama. You're welcome. Isn't my binti herb garden that Mama planted for me so beautiful? 
I'm so thankful and grateful to Mama for planning it for me this year because I cook so much with herbs that it's really nice to just have them all in one place. It's like one-stop shopping for all of my fresh herbs. And in the meantime, I finished frying our Lebanese-style French fries, which I have right here. And we're going to finish them off with my tomb sauce, which I already started. I started off with one whole head of garlic that I mashed down into this nice, smooth paste that you guys can see right there, okay? So it's really nice and creamy, and we're gonna basically blend it right now with my olive oil. And we're gonna first sort of blend the garlic with the oil until it becomes kind of one consistency. Kind of marry the two elements together. Look at that. You see how nice and creamy it got with the olive oil and the garlic paste? And now we're just gonna sort of stream in some fresh lemon juice. Just like so, about half of the amount. Now I just want to blend that lemon juice in with the olive oil and with the garlic. Just like that. I think it's so fun to make the tomb. I actually love making our tomb sauce and kind of mashing garlic and our jitin and our mortar and pestles. <laughs> kind of gets out, you know, all of your aggression for the day at least, right? <laughs> and now what we're gonna do is I'm going to drizzle this all over our Lebanese style French fries. Okay, and I actually am gonna sprinkle them a little bit with some fresh parsley that I have right here. Give them a little touch of some sea salt also. And there you have it. There is our Lebanese style French fries that we call batata mitli. And I'm just gonna actually leave them right over here because now we have one more dish to finish and you know what it is. It's our tabbouli because it's tabbouli time and it's our tabbouli day. It's all about tabbouli. So I'm gonna grab our tabbouli bowl and then we have our beautiful fresh mint leaves just sort of awaiting us right on top. And the reason why we didn't chop these beforehand is because they would essentially turn sort of brownish color or even black. You know, very similar to basil in that way. Okay, the mint goes right on top just like so. And by now, our bulgari is definitely softened because it's been soaking the water. And remember, if you want to use quinoa, you definitely can do that for a gluten-free version. Okay, now we're going to basically just toss this up in some fresh lemon juice and olive oil in our sea salt. And now we're going to give it a good old-fashioned Lebanese mix using our hands. <laughs> just sort of kind of scooping underneath where those tomatoes have been nestling and all of their delicious juices. And they're just sort of being thoroughly incorporated with the flat leaf parsley, with our scallions, our spring onions, with our fresh mint, of course, and our fresh lemon juice, olive oil, and sea salt. And that is it. I am so happy that I was able to share my tabbouleh show with all of you and all of the traditions that I've seen at our Lebanese table since I was a little girl. We have our famous salata, our queen salata, our tabbouleh right here front and center, and then who could forget about our luscious lahamishwi, our lamb kebabs, leading the way like they do in Lebanon and here on our Lebanese table. And then our, well, my Sitho's favorite, I should say, our Lebanese-style French fries, our patata mitli. And our tomb sauce, a nice bowl of this as well, so we can sort of dip the lamb in the tomb sauce and kind of have the whole entire beautiful tabbouleh dishes kind of blend well with one another. And I can't wait to share these with my Uncle Dominic, of course. And I wish you and yours always to take little bowl hana, eat in happiness, sending smiles. Cheers to you. Cheers to you too. For giving me my childhood nickname that is now my feed name. It's a pleasure. <laughs> our fresh good. tabbouleh. Some of our Lebanese style french fries with garlic, right. lemon, thyme, and fresh parsley. And last but certainly not least, our lahan bishmi, our Lebanese lamb kebabs just for you. Can't wait to eat and I can't wait to enjoy this traditional tabbouleh meal with you. <laughs> I've been waiting all day long for this. I really love that Tabuli is my nickname and stage name because it really is one of my most favorite dishes to make and to eat and to enjoy with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> love you. Love you too. <laughs>
Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen, authentic recipes for fresh and flavorful Mediterranean home cooking is now available. The cookbook offers 125 recipes, hands-on instructions, and tips and tricks to help you make all of Julie's dishes from this season. Cook, create, and celebrate Julie's authentic recipes right at home. To order a copy, call 1-800-PLAY-PBS or order online at shoppbs.org. Join Julie Tabuli for fresh and flavorful Lebanese foods for your family and friends at julietabuli.com. Find Julie's authentic recipes for the tastiest Mediterranean home cooking. It's Julie tested and mama approved. Visit julietabuli.com today. Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen is made possible by... Do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. Thank you.